is the Chrissy Swan Show. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there, Hollywood Jack. How are you? I'm good, Swanee. How are you? Look, I, I'm good, but I've just got to ask. I, I start most of my sentences with, is it just me? And I just want to ask, is it just me or every time you drive somewhere, mm. do you find yourself taking a completely different route? No. Okay. All right. So it is just me. (laughs) It is. I just find myself halfway to where I'm going, going, oh, I'm here. I've made that decision to turn left here. Okay. I'll have to get home from here. And I did that today on the way to work. Inexplicably, I found myself on every city has a horror road, the road that is famous. Mm-hmm for being an absolute pain to get through. And I found myself in the middle of that road on a route I've never used before. I mean, every day in my life is an adventure. You drive here every day. Why would you not stick to the same route? Well, I took a slight detour and then I think I forget where I'm going and then my muscle memory (laughs) kicks in and I think I'm going somewhere else. To be in your brain whilst driving would be scary. It's utterly exhausting. (laughs) We are about to do a round of Blankety Blanks. It's the audio version. Yeah, it is, Swanee, and that means you can't Google it and ruin it. Yeah, we're better than you at this. What you can do is win a $300 Underworks Heat Bods winter warmer pack. The Chrissy Swan Show. Let's do this. And now it's time to play Blankety Blanks. Oh, yes. I've found an audio blankety blanks today. I like this one. Tricky. Normally we do a headline where we go, you know, Sarah killed her blank. But today we're going sneaky so nobody can Google it like they did last week. Catherine, you're going to be the first person to guess and potentially win a $300 Underworks Heat Bods Winter Warmers Pack. You're from Queensland, Catherine. Is, is Is the temperature plummeting yet or no? Hey, Chrissy and Jack. Yes, the temperature is plummeting. Us Queenslanders don't really like the cold, so today I'm in long sleeve and doesn't really happen in Queensland. I mean, it's probably often. 23 degrees or something, <laughs> isn't it, Kath? Well, maybe, but for us Queenslanders, that's cool. I'm actually okay? looking. I'm at, we've got a screen with all the weather on. It says Brisbane 21. Now stop your complaining, Catherine from Queensland. <laughs> well, I don't have a scarf on yet, so I'm not ha! too bad. Chrissy. All right, darling, have you got your listening ears on? I do. I have them on. I'm going to play on. you. I'm going to play you an audio grab, and then you've got to guess where what the missing word is. You ready? I'm ready. Go. You could put a cane pepper poultice on an underactive. You can put That'll a cane pepper. Up. You can put a cane pepper poultice on a. That'll wake it up. What are we putting the cayenne pepper poultice on? I would put it on spaghetti bolognese. Ha! No, but that is that is brilliant, Renee. Hello. What are we? Hello. Has Renee heard it? I never know how these work. She has, but let's play it once more for everyone. Okay. You could put a cayenne pepper poultice on an underactive. That'll wake it up. Oh, what'll wake up with a cayenne pepper poultice? Chicken. No. Uh, Tracy. It's, it's so weird. Poultice is uh, a word that my gran used to use. It's a good Tracy, word. Tracy, have you heard of a poultice? No, never. Oh. I'm thinking you're thinking what the heck. All right. You're thinking what the heck. What is the missing word here? Can you repeat the sentence again? With pleasure. <laughs> you could put a cane pepper poultice on an underactive... You can put it. That'll wake it up. You can put a cayenne pepper poultice <laughs> on what to wake it up? My husband's tongue. <laughs> <laughs> no. Tim, Tracy, what? Why do you need to wake up your husband's tongue? What's going on there? Oh, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, that's so good. Timmy. Hey, Chrissy. Hey. How you going? Hey, Jack. Hey, Tim. Do you know what a poultice is to start with? I don't. I oh, don't. Oh, Any hints is, would be welcome. This is the best. So a poultice, my gran used to use to draw out in, impurities. So the the famous use of the poultice was my cousin who lived with her had a giant boil on his butt cheek, Ooh. and she made a poultice to put on it with all sorts of bits and bobs. So knowing that, Tim, now that we know what a cayenne pepper poultice is. What is the missing word here? 
I'm, I'm going to say steak. <laughs> it is not a steak. Anna, what are we waking up with a cayenne pepper poultice? I don't know. <laughs> Have a crack. Anything. Um, I don't know. A flower? <laughs> no, it is. Can I give a hint, Jack? Yeah. It is an organ. It is a part of the body. Michelle, what are oh, we... I know it. What are we waking up with a cayenne pepper poultice? An underactive thyroid. Correct, Michelle. Woohoo! Yes, Michelle. You have won yourself a $300 Underworks Heat Bods Winter Warmers Pack Underworks, the number one down under for socks. I tell you what, an Underworks Pack will wake up an underactive poultice I want <laughs> thyroid. What was that? <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. Download the free Priceline Pharmacy app and skip the prescription queue. With its handy pre-order function, order your script and they'll message you when it's ready. Visit Priceline.com.au for more details about the Priceline app. The Chrissy Swan Show. We have some questions, though. Who does that? Jack and I are weirdly aligned on human behaviour. And quite often we come up with exactly the same opinion about things. And we say, who does that? We're either, we're, there's no grey area with you or I. No. We are either in the same camp or like vehemently opposite each other with our opinions. That's right. But equally curious. True. And we want to understand. Yes. We want to understand. Yesterday we were talking about camping. You and I do Ugh. not like camping. No. But we are open to have our minds changed. They weren't. No, they weren't. <laughs> but we're open. And also, full disclosure, there is nothing anyone can say about camping that makes it okay nope. for us. But here is the birth of a new segment, Who Does That? And it sounds accusatory, I understand. But <laughs> thirteen twenty four ten, if you are the sort of person that mixes snacks in a bowl, all right, because we want to understand the thought process behind it. The reason this came up was... There was some sort of celebration last week here at Nova. Was it the the Craven Cart? You know how Marina pushes around the Craven Cart? Well, it's the Craven Cart. Craven Cart. It's C- the Craven Crit. C R V N C R T. I would love to know why there's no vowels in there. No, I'd like to, I'd like to buy a vowel, as they say. On I've the asked Fortune. the question because apparently on a number plate that's all you can fit, so it's meant to be like it's a cart going around the office. I think. <laughs> 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 See, this is the whole purpose of who yes. does that because you have seen Kriven Crit and you've gone, who does that? And now you've got I an understand. answer. understand. So there was a little celebration and, you know, th- this is a great place to work. There's always snacks. And there were open bowls of chips, mm. right? And there was one bowl with uh, sour cream and chive thins, which are, you know, superior, of course. But then in another bowl, there were crinkle cut chips, and cheesels. Absolutely no. In the same bowl. Hard no. And I saw it and I thought, why is this so, in the parlance of our time, why is this so triggering to me? <laughs> and I remember the first time. Yeah, why I, is it? I, I remember the very first time I ever saw that and I asked, who does that? I would have been six years old. Okay. I was at a six-year-old birthday party in someone's garage from prep and in one of those you know the timber bowls that were yes. really popular? Yeah, yeah. In one of those timber bowls were barbecue chips. Right. Which are a very underrated flavour, by the way. My mother's favourite. The, he's really... Yeah, mad for barbecue chips. Barbecue chips. I'm in my chicken chips era at the moment. Okay. That's for another time. Barbecue chips and then cheesels in it. And I remember looking at like- that and thinking, unless there are no other bowls in this house, which I know was not possible, my six-year-old sensibilities were offended by the mixing of snacks, and they still are. As they should be. It is cross-contamination. There is no reason for it. There is another bowl somewhere. Right. Or, like, put them just on a paper towel. Go full bogan. Keep them in the packet and just, like, slit the packet open. Correct. I don't mind. 13, 20, 4, 10... We're going to play a round of who does that. Do you do this? Do you do it? Tell us why. Like, we won't judge you. No. We just, oh. Oh, we, we, like, we <laughs> no, won't we, on air. We'll, we'll do it in the song. <laughs> I will try not to. The Chrissy Swan Show. The Chrissy Swan Show. One of the greatest things about having the ears of millions of people is that we can ask this. 
Who does that? Who does that? What a great question. I feel like this is going to be a regular, Jack. I hope so. Because I'm genu- genuinely curious as to who mixes party snacks in one bowl. Specifically, I'm talking crisps and, and, and a cheese snack. So, salt and vinegar chips in with a twisty. Absolutely not. Like, it's so offensive to me. Barbecue chips in with a cheesel. <sighs> Separate bowls, please. Please. And do you know what's interesting, Swanee? On a cheese board, I'm happy to have all the different cheeses somewhat together because they sort of stay in their own. But there's something about a chip. You know what flavour you're after. Like, it's a very specific thought process when you're deciding the flavour of chip you would like to consume. I agree. So Emmy? Do not mix them. Do you do this? Hi, guys. So, I actually mix cheese, uh, chicken twisties with peanut M&Ms, but I draw the line at mixing two different chips together. I'm sorry? <laughs> chicken twisties and peanut M&Ms? Yes. Do you not have two bowls in your house? <laughs> <laughs> no, it goes well together. You have to try it. No, it doesn't. Chicken? Chicken? Okay, I'm not satisfied. I just, I don't feel like that goes. Having said that, I do like a square of chocolate and a pretzel, but I will put them together myself. Yeah, externally, separate yes. from the bowl. Emmy, we do appreciate you being honest, and for that, we're going to send you a two hundred dollar mini max voucher. Oh my god, you are so lucky! You could buy a bowl with that. <laughs> Anne Marie, please tell me, do you do this? I did. You're not going to like me. <laughs> I do. I love you, but I don't want to eat your snacks. Well, you probably will because I actually mix my nuts, all my nuts, with a packet of chips. All right. Talk to, talk me through which nuts and which chips and why. Well, I mix a trail mix. You know, the mixed nuts, like peanuts with all the different like nuts with almonds in it. Yeah. And nuts, all that one, the mixed one. Mm. And I put a packet of chips in there too. Like, but Henry, I, isn't... It mixed up enough with the nuts? Isn't there enough variety in no, that bowl? No, you need a bit of chips in it as well because we get a bit <laughs> over the nuts. <laughs> over the nuts. What is you your... You need a bit of a crunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is your vibe? Like if you turned up to somebody's party and there was a big bowl with chicken twisties and cheese twisties in the same bowl, what would you do? I'll grab a handful and eat them. So there's actually mm. there's actually one a packet now that's um, cheese twisties and chicken. I flavor. didn't know that. Really? But wouldn't the yeah. se- in the packet doesn't the seasoning and flavour go all over each other and just cancel one another out? Mm, not really. Also, Anne Marie, this is very personal. But whereabouts in Queensland are you from? <laughs> Um, Boona. Oh, Boona. <laughs> Love it. Good old Boona. Anne Marie, you have a two hundred dollar mini max <laughs> voucher, mate. Oh, thanks. Buy a bowl. I like Anne-Marie. You know what? I would be one of those annoying people at a party. I am one of those (laughs) annoying people (laughs) where if I was faced with chicken twisties and cheese twisties, I would pick out. And that's the other thing that you should avoid is fingers selecting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And then you get dirty fingers, no. And then if you're touching the chicken twisty to put in your palm, if that's your choice, then you've touched all the cheese Ugh. ones around it. Heidi. Yes? Talk to me. <laughs> oh, you're definitely not going to like what I'm going to say. <laughs> Heidi, talk to me about this lucky dip concept. <laughs> I had to have everything in one bowl. What do you, what do you mean, mean by everything? Run us through everything. <laughs> Break down this everything. I mean, like, like chicken chips, salt and vinegar, Cheezels, pretzels, um, some um, oh, peanuts, everything. Okay, Heidi. I, I want- can't decide. <laughs> no, no, no. I, ca- I can. We are sending you a $200 Minimax voucher. Please go and buy a set of five bowls, okay? <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. I only listen to the Tortured Poets Department now. Please move on now to Billie Eilish's Hit Me Hard and Soft. It's far better. All right, I'll put it on the agenda. Let's do this. Chrissy's Clickbait. 
Andy Cohen, Y slash N. Big Y. Yeah. So he's behind all of those Real Housewives bits and bobs. Yes. And he started as like an executive and a producer before he got his own late night talk show. So he's like got an incredible brain for media and TV. Yeah. And he just loves it. Loves it. Absolutely loves it. Mad for it. (laughs) He is waiting for the thing that will cancel him. After the Bravo lawsuit. Yeah, people have had a crack the last year at him, Swanee, and he's managed to be like Teflon. He's he is absolutely Teflon. Mm. What what's your take on cancelling? The I, cancel culture. I feel like it's changing. Okay. I think it definitely has got to a point where people are just looking to be outraged and cancel people. Don't get me wrong, there's people like Diddy who deserve to be cancelled and are awful. But then there are people like um, I know Kelly Osborne once said something that she probably shouldn't have said on a live TV program and people wanted to cancel her and I'm like, no, 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 let her apologise mm. and then let's let her keep being Kelly Osborne. Like, people slip up. I agree and I feel like, you know, 10 years ago, when did social media start? Like, I don't even know. It must be 10 or 15. 15 years ago, yeah. That was when you could do the smallest thing and that's it, you would never work again. I feel like... Things are turning. I think particularly for women who are the very first to be cancelled. Yes. I feel like the majority of people now consuming social media and headlines are able to kind of ascertain where they stand on stuff. Yeah. And they're not all baying for blood and following the pack to to kill that person. They're starting to form their own opinions somewhat. That's right. That's right. I also think time's a big thing, Swanee. Like, I've got someone in my life that went through something that they tried to be cancelled for. And I think time spoke to it to help it. And I also think if you truly know that person, like a celebrity like we do or we've seen their body of work, you know who they are at their core. Yes. Don't you reckon? Like, if you were to say something silly and slip up... We'd be able Which to forgive you. Which I always you do. Because we love you and we know you have good intentions. And human beings do that. Yeah, let people be human. And I feel like that is definitely changing. I feel like, you know, you're going to say some stuff and people will understand it. Let's move on to Miley Cyrus. She's never done anything to be cancelled, has she? Even though, oh, God, she was so fabulous in that Wrecking Ball clip. Wasn't she? I'll never forget it. Absolutely brilliant. She has sat down with W Magazine for the pop issue. She is on the cover looking exactly like her mother. She does look like Tish. I thought the same. It is like Billy Ray did not have a say in anything. (laughs) Although sometimes when someone looks exactly like one of their parents, if you look at their parents, sometimes they look alike. And I think Tish and Billy Ray look very could similar. Be related. They could be related. We're not saying they are. <laughs> um, she has talked about winning her first Grammy. She says, no shade, <laughs> but I've been doing this for 20 years. <laughs> well, she's turned into Selma and Patty from The Simpsons. I love it. And she says, and this is my first time actually being taken seriously at the Grammys. That was a beautiful response from her too. It meant some, really something to her, which was lovely to see. And a beautiful performance. Yes. She really embraced that. She's magic. She says, if you want to talk like impact on culture, then where the beep was I? This is not about arrogance. I am proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Chrissy Swan Show. How you feeling? Feeling good for a Tuesday. It's my most hated day, but I'm feeling good. 10 out of 10, I reckon, today. Yeah. Uh, and 10 out of 10 uh, for the contents of the bum bag. Very exciting inclusion Amy Shark tickets. Yes, tickets to her Sadness Tour, which is coming to Australia this October. It's her biggest tour ever, Swanee. She's playing all of her hits and tracks from her brand new album, Sunday Sadness. Tickets and info at livenation.com.au. She's named named her whole tour Sadness after my Friday nights. (laughs) True. (laughs) (laughs) The Chrissy Swan Show. Let's give away a bum bag at Amy Shark tickets. Chrissy's Quizzy. Not just any bum bag, a limited edition Christy Swan Show bum bag, plus tickets to Amy Shark's concert. How exciting, Elise. Do you want it? Yeah, really, really bad, yes. Who would you take? <laughs> um, uh, my, probably my one of my daughters. daughters. Oh, we've, got a, we've got everybody on there. That's all right. Because we've got Elise and Lisa. Oh, so they think oh. Lisa thinks I'm talking yeah. to you because people call you Lise, don't they? 
All right, we've established that awesome. you both want the tickets. You both want the tickets <laughs> and you both want the bum bag. Uh, probably less than the tickets, but you'll accept the bum bag if the tickets are in it. Because there is something quite good up for stakes, no shade on your bum bag. Actually, sure. all the shade. Um, Elise, can you yell out E and Lisa, you, you yell out L, just so we have a Sorry. very clear, definitive winner. Sure. Oh, my God. Sure. Thank God you're doing the scoring because you have messed with my wiring. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna nail this. Your names are your buzzers, or in this case, your initials are your buzzers. It's the best of five, meaning the first person to get three answers correct wins the game, and will walk away with the money. Can't buy Chrissy Swancho a bum bag, and a big hello to all the kids that have just been picked up from school and love this game. Question number one: Can you name the Nova presenter Amy Shark went to primary? Hey. Yes, Elise. Uh, Ricky. Lee. It is Ricky Lee. Yay. Question number two. The White House is located in which city in America? E. Yes, E. At Washington. Correct. That is two, Elise. Yep. Ooh. <laughs> Question number three. This is for the win. You would have made short work of this. Can you name this song? It's the lead single from Amy's album, Cry Forever. Everybody, everybody rise. E. S. E. For the win. Cry for you. No. Lisa, do you want to take the steal? Yes. Everybody say hi. No, Uh, it is everybody rise. Question number four. Taylor Momsen was bitten by a what while supporting ACDC at the weekend? Oh, E. Yes, E for the win this time. A bat? It was a bat. On her leg. (laughs) Have you ever been bitten by a wild animal? And by a wild animal, I don't mean your boyfriend. (laughs) I have. Isn't it terrifying? What kind of animal? It was a wild cockatoo. <laughs> Yuck. And it ripped into my finger as I was trying nicely to feed it. Oh, my God. They always get angry at the end of the food. Don't they? Mm-hmm. The Chrissy Swan Show. The Chrissy Swan Show. Let's talk sassy repartee with an authority figure, shall we? 13, 20, 4, 10, is there anything kind of cheeky ever popped out of your mouth to a police officer or are you a police officer that is willing oh, yes. to divulge the cheekiest, sassiest thing that you have been told? Be anonymous. Don't be scared to call us. 13, Absolutely. 20, 4, 10. You are, well, we're talking about this because of this gorgeous story. I mean, how good are Pringles? Oh, an original Pringle. Almost would be my favourite chip. Number two. I've just realised they don't do a chicken Pringle and that is a mistake. Because they perfected the Pringle with the original. No need for a chicken Have you swan. ever seen how Pringles are made? No. Have you ever wondered how they're so perfectly uniform? I haven't, but now you say it, I'd love to know. You're like, no potato looks like that. What do you mean? that To get them all uniform like that, you would have to only take one careful slice from each potato and that is not what happens. Is there like a factory full of people somewhere in the world like carving them out? No. They mash it all together. It's a potato mix. Ah. And then uh, they make the perfectly curved chip. Does that mean we're eating like 3% potato and the rest of it's some other weird funky stuff? How very dare (laughs) you. It's the funky stuff that brings the flavour. True. The funky stuff is what made this thief do what he did. His name is Adam Spencer, not the Australian person (laughs) from television. A guy called Adam Spencer recently admitted to a string of thefts, including two separate incidents at the same shop in one morning. He stole, and I dips me lid to him, (laughs) <laughs> 17 tubes of Pringles in one go in Nottinghamshire. Where was he hiding them? That is a great question. I don't think anyone can hide 17 canisters of Pringles. Have you noticed also, as an aside, Pringles taste the best when you're on a plane? Yeah, they do. That's the only time I really eat them. Something affects the flavour. I agree. They that altitude delicious. adds a level of saltiness to them. Oh, my God. And crunch. And what about when you get to the end of the perfectly silver-lined canister oh. and there are the little crispy bits and you tip it up and you drink it like yeah. a drink, like a Pringles drink. And I like doing that because my fingers don't get dirty. You know how I don't do that with barbecue shapes or anything, but with a Pringle, you can drink it. You can. In a clean fashion. Now, Adam Spencer broke through a back door at 2.40 a.m. on the 2nd of May He stole meat products and then he went back at 4.20 a.m. Because everybody knows 
that if you're going to steal meat products, you've got to go back for the Pringles. <laughs> His hands were full. When he was apprehended by the authority figures, the police, the popo. The popo. He delivered the sassiest explanation for his criminal behaviour. He looked them straight in the eye and he said, once you pop, you can't stop, (laughs) officer. (laughs) That is irresistible. And I would think that if I was that authority figure, I would be tempted to let him go. Totally. If you are an authority figure, we're talking a policeman, ticket inspector, maybe someone that works at the council, a ticket officer, people that book people. Yeah, like on the trams even. What is the sassiest response you've ever had to catching somebody doing the wrong thing? 13 24 10, give us a call. Have you ever sassed anyone, Swanee? I have not. I can never think. I always think of the best thing to say two days later when I'm in the shower and I think, oh, God, I I should have said that. that. Have you got one? Um, I never have, but I remember as a kid my dad did. We were driving to Inskip in Queensland. I've never heard of that place, Inskip. I'll show you online. It's beautiful. We were rocking out to some wiggles and the (laughs) officer asked Dad to wind his window down and explain why he was speeding Mm. and my dad said, I got wiggled away, officer. I got (laughs) wiggled away. (laughs) The Chrissy Swan Show. I've got Garfield movie passes with your name on it. And Lord knows, with school holidays coming up, you're going to need this. You're going to need something to entertain the kids. Further to that, we are talking all things Pringles. A guy has stolen, how many was it? 12, 14, 17. 17 sleeves. Cubes (laughs) Cubes. of Pringles. Now, I am such a bag nerd that I straight away thought, I hope he's got one of those super-sized Kmart bags that you can buy or the big blue Ikea ones because you're going to need that to put your 17 yeah. packs of Pringles in. When he was apprehended by the police, he said, once you stop, you can't – once you pop, you can't stop, <laughs> which was a fair excuse. Now, I am – I mentioned earlier in the show that I am in my chicken chip era. Mm. 13, 24, 10 – what is your favourite flavour chip? Because we want to fight with you about it, all right? Pringles don't do a chicken chip, or so I thought. Alicia, what can you tell Hi. me about a chicken Pringle? Well, they actually come in the mini size. And I had a quick Google while I was waiting, and I think there is a tube of chicken Pringles, but I'm yet to actually find it in store because the Woolies site didn't actually say they had it in stock. But... I think they've had it before, but for the moment, they've just got the mini flavours, uh, chicken flavour in a pack of five. Alicia. And it's my daughter's favourite at the moment. Can I tell you, I appreciate your Google searching on my behalf. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You're welcome. Now, the confusing thing about this, though, is Pringles are trailblazers in terms of what colour they attribute to their flavours. Everybody knows the salt and vinegar is pink. Mm. Everybody knows that plain is blue and everybody knows that chicken is green. Now, and my chicken packet is green, dark yes, green actually. But the original Pringles is green. Oh, really? My original no. is uh, red. I know. Oh, the original is red, which is confusing. Yeah. Sour cream and chives is green. Are you sure that you've got chicken? Yes, it's dark green. It says mini chicken flavour. I'm holding it in my hand. All right. I believe you. I would like some photographic evidence. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I, your I your that. daughter loves the chicken and, and so do I and so does my daughter actually. Sarah, you have a controversial choice for your favourite chip flavour. Yes, I do. And it is? Mine is the Samboy tomato chip. Ugh. I didn't even know you could still get Samboys. Yeah, you can, yeah. And what Very does, rare to come by. Do you taste actual tomato as flavouring or is it like deceivingly tastier? Because <laughs> tomato is not something I would need to taste on a chip. Well, no, I don't normally like tomato, but the tomato chips have a unique taste and, yeah, it's quite, quite enjoyable. Wow. A tomato chip Gross. and a Samboy. I remember growing up, going to the show, or you know, the Ecker, the Easter show, whatever. The Samboy show bag was a must 
have. What happened to Samboys? Because they were so popular as kids and now you just don't hear about them. You don't them. hear about them at all? Where are you, Samboys? The Chrissy Swan Show. We have opened our laptops for Laptop Lottery. Shop laptops at the Harvey Norman clearance on now. Best brands, best range, best price guaranteed. Chrissy Swan's Laptop Lottery. I mean, three words I can't get enough of. Harvey Norman and clearance. Right? Poof. Would you like a new laptop, Jordan? I really would. How good is it when you get the laptop and you open it up and it works? Swanee. <laughs> oh. Even if it does work, I don't know if it's working in your hands. No, I'm not very good at this. Hello, Karen. Hello, Chrissy. Oh, is it Karen or Karen? It is. It's Karen. You did I, it well. I Thank thought you. it was Karen. Um, now, look, I... I'm not playing for you, Karen. Jack is playing for you, which means that you've got a much better chance of okay. winning this amazing laptop. I'm going to get you this laptop, Karen. Yes, you go, Jack. Jordan, I've got full faith in you. Commiserations already, but let's go, shall we? We've brought Tom into the studio, as obviously I can't know the topics or questions. Here are the rules of the game. Each day this week, Jack and I are going to be playing on behalf of uh, a listener. That's you. We're going to be given something to Google, and whoever gets it first gets the point. Got it? Got it. Sounds great. Oh, my thing's just gone. Oh, no, oh. wait. No, I've worked it out. It's all right. <laughs> okay. If you'd like to play this with us tomorrow or the next day or the next day, register via the Nova Player app. Tom, welcome to the studio. Let's do this. Hello. How are we? Great, Tom. Question one. Yeah. How many Oscar nominations has Meryl Streep received? Eight. I don't even need to Google it. Incorrect. 21. Oh, oh, 21. Jack, you are correct. Yes. Uh, oh, I think she's won eight or something. No, she's won three. Oh. Bless you, Swanee. Oh, my God. I Googled how men in Oscar Merrill. <laughs> All righty. That's but, one point to you, Karin. Sorry. A question number two. Karin. As of 2024, <laughs> yeah. what is the population of France? Oh, my God. Jack. Oh my god. 64,872,454. Correct. Um, Karen, you've won a laptop. Karen. Oh, you're kidding me. Karen. No way. Karen, you have won a laptop. Karen. <laughs> Karen. Thanks, thanks, Christy, and thanks, Jack. That's awesome. I was only just looking at laptops in the shop just two days ago. We're just desperate for one. Well, I'm filled with rage with my old one. So thank you so much. Yes, they have a habit of doing that. I'm so yeah. sorry, Jordan. It didn't go your way. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Jordan. Register again and try play yes, again this week. please. But, Karen, I'll send me a that. photo of you in that laptop. Yes. Shop laptops at the Harvey Norman clearance. Did you just get her name right? Odd now. Best <laughs> brands, best range, best price guaranteed. Is it Karen or Karen? Karen. 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 I, I said it right. Name so much. Google that, you upstart. <laughs> <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. Let's go clicking for the last time. Chrissy's Clickbait. In the parlance of our times, my bad. What? <laughs> because I have said that James Corden is a bad man because I've believed an article that was released a couple of days ago. Look, we may have jumped to conclusions here, <laughs> <laughs> but prior to this article, he has been known as a bad dude. I know, because he was mean to waiters. Yeah. And they've come out and said that, and that's my least favourite sort of person, so I've sort of written him off. He was photographed at a an airport in Lisbon wildly gesticulating and looking angry. And the journalist obviously didn't investigate the uh, story and I believed everything the, the uh, <laughs> journalist told me. As we so do. did you. Um, because it looked like he was tearing a new one for airport staff. Turns out that is not true. A passenger on the flight that they were all on before these photographs were taken said that there was a, an emergency on the plane, they were in a holding pattern for 45 minutes. They were told to collect their belongings, which is our idea of fresh hell. Like I'd just end it there. Yeah, and take their shoes off and assume the brace position. Wait, why do you have to die with your shoes off? Because it, just in case, well, I don't know, but I always guess that you take your shoes off just in case you have to go wee. Oh, on the slide. That inflatable <laughs> slide. Which, frankly, if I died at the end of, that'd be fine because that would be fun. What a way to go. So good. Um, but uh, they were all in that, which I imagine was very, you know, terrifying. And then they weren't really told anything. And apparently throughout that entire ordeal, 
James Corden was wonderful. He was cordial. He was James Cordial. And he was going around making sure everyone was okay and entertaining people on the plane and stopping for selfies, all of that sort of bizzo. That's nice then. Then they got off the plane. They weren't really told what was going on. And he was just saying to the staff, why are we here and why are we in the wrong queue? Look, I think he's done a very good thing here, but even so, Swanee, maybe he should have got someone else to do the arguing with staff after. Like, you're James Court, just let it go. That's true. You know what I mean? I would have said to my manager or said to another passenger that I got chummy with, Oi, can you go spray them? I can't because I'm me. Oh, so what he's done is he's taken on the role of, like, camp leader. Yeah, as Karen. As Karen! <laughs> he is the Karen. Now, are we out of here? We've or got- Look, I was going to talk about garlic bread. Because we have found an unbelievable review exchange of people talking about supermarket-based garlic bread. But I'm going to save it. Here is a tease. Oh, I like it. We are going to talk about it tomorrow. And I am going to show you, Jack, and everybody listening, how to make the best garlic bread you will have ever had for very cheap and very quick. Okay, good, because I saw your oven Instagram post last night and I asked, I'm still waiting. Did you see me in the comment section? Yes, you asked for herb bread. Well, what, what, did you, what did you say you would make me? Well, I don't know, but it wasn't her bread. <laughs> it was her bread. Banana bread. <laughs> no, it was something that you made for the kids with, like, salt and herbs. Oh, focaccia. Focaccia, with that's rosemary. the word. Oh, my God. See, this is the problem. I'm so easily suggestible. I'm going to have to go home and make you yes. a focaccia. Now, check this out. The Chrissy Swan Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.